Hey guys, welcome to the In The Game Room Podcast, episode number 96, coming to you again from Adepticon. Tonight I did a little something that in the YouTube language is called a collab, or a collaboration. That's where two YouTubers get together and do a blog, or video blog, or vlog, or whatever you want to call it, podcast, together. And that's what happened. I got together with my good friend Paul Walker from The War Room and The War HQ, and we just did a little sit-down chat tonight about uh, the tournaments today and what we saw and things like that. His podcast is um, Bolt Action specific. Mine sometimes is, sometimes isn't. But this episode is going to be about Bolt Action for the most part and Adepticon. So hope you enjoy. So aloha everybody. For me, this is going to be The War Room and I'm here with Alan. And I'm here with Paul. I'm it's like we've done this already, isn't it? <laughs> I'll, I'll be playing the part of Harrison today. Playing the part of Harrison? Do so, we need to feed you a few, few drinks? I don't I don't have enough hair to, to be Harrison, but I'll try. So, uh, well, for the war room, we normally open with what's in the news. There isn't really that much in the news because I haven't looked at any. I did today. Yeah, I so saw, what did you see that was in the news? Something online today, I saw uh, Warlord is announcing winter Germans in plastic. Oh, I didn't see that at all. That passed me by. Right so here. winter Germans here, uh, Falschmeager, what are we getting? Oh shit, too many questions. <laughs> I just I just saw I just saw I the just box saw it. just saw the box art about an hour ago and it said winter Germans. So was that on the uh, uh, new uh, the newsletter? No, I believe it was in the on the uh, Warlord North America Facebook group. So Warlord North America Facebook group, go there. And we are at, of course, Adepticon. So this is yeah. the Adepticon episode. It is. And the guys from Warlord USA are here. So hi, John, Jay, and all the rest of the guys. Right on, yep. Um, so if you are in Chicago, go and have a look at them. Yep. Uh, what else could you say? So Adepticon is not only uh, probably one of the largest competitions in the world for certainly for 40k and uh, GW. Also, it's getting pretty large for bolt action. Very impressed. I saw at least 20 tables, I think. Yeah, so we had, um, it was doubles today. And yeah, I think we had 20. So we're talking about six, the best part of 60 players. Yeah. And, and who ended up winning prizes today? Well, there were a lot of prizes today. Uh, I've got some Facebook footage, so you can see the actual names because you guys know what I'm like and I forget most of everything that's going on. But the best access general was Sean Vilma. And who? <laughs> and myself. This we, guy right we, here. We won a medal, guys. An Adepticon medal. medal. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So that was, that was very, very cool. And it is rather a good medal. And I'll probably bum myself up and put some Photographs as that up between us here somewhere, just so you can see it. So that was really nice, but it was a fantastic day. You were watching for most of the time, so what did you think of the competition? It was pretty cool. I, I saw a lot of good games with a lot of different types of scenery, a lot of different scenarios. Um, the tables were awesome. It was a great group of players. Uh, the people, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. I could walk up to anybody and just strike up a conversation with a total stranger, and I'm not good at that in any environment. But here it was easy, everybody was cool, nobody was like, you know, don't bother me, I'm busy, you know, it was just, everybody was friendly and having a good time. I saw people losing games that were still happy. <laughs> they just, they don't care, they're just happy to play. Yeah. So, yeah, it was great. And uh, they did a lot of awards, they did sportsmanship yeah. awards, they did the yeah. Axis. Yeah, one, two, three on sportsmanship, yeah. one, two, three, yeah. It was Axis Generals. Allied generals, and then they did what a painting thing. Yeah, two prizes for best painted. Yeah. Uh, so the best painted, that was a fantastic. Did you see the submarine board? I did see the submarine board. That was a fantastic board. Yeah. I'm not too sure how the figures were painted because I was too busy looking at this beautiful submarine. Yeah. I think that was Empress Minnie's submarine. Um, I don't know if you know them. We're back there in the UK. They do uh, like a four-part submarine that's um, floating. Okay. Um, so it's half the hull's cut away, and I think UK prices that is only about sixty pound. So what's that? Hundred bucks, maybe yeah. just under. Seventy or eighty at least. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty good value for money, and these guys did an excellent job of it. I do have some shots, so again, I'll put them somewhere around about here in the video. <laughs> Something between us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean it was 
It was a great event. This is my first time coming to Adepticon ever. I've been going to Little Wars for the last three years. Little Wars is a great convention, very historical, um, but this is a bigger, better convention. So Sorry, Little Wars, this is better. Um, Little Wars is more historical. It's, 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 yeah. it's to a different market. It's a different market, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm very happy that I came here. I'm going to come again. And next year I'll get in the tournament for sure. I played a couple of games last night. I uh, played one against this yeah. chap here, and then one against my friend Rob. And I, had a, I lost both times, but I had a great time we doing it. We should tape them on. We'll maybe try and get another game and tape it. Yeah, we should. For the we channels. Should. But yeah, we had great fun. Lots of new faces to meet, lots of old friends. Uh, so we'll be going down and trying to catch up with James Waffle, the yep. rather well-known painter for bull action and various things. Yeah. And we'll see what he's up to. Who else is here at the stand that guys might be interested in? What did you run into? Well, I mean, the guy you played with, the, the Wahoo Warrior. Yeah, the last Sean Volman, the Wahoo yeah. Warrior. Yeah. We're hoping to encourage Sean to get back to the taping. Exactly. And no doubt there'll be uh, an interview with him uh, being the winner today. So, yeah. one of the few times I can remember to have an interview with the winner. <laughs> I got a, I got video today of the entire awards presentation, so that'll be cool. I'll put that up. I got some, but mine was pretty shaky, so. Okay. Too many drinks, or what? Or not enough? Just not strong enough for being a Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to pick up the money all day off the floor. So. <laughs> That's what we hear. Uh, yeah. So that was cool. Um, the big news here at the show, of course, is uh, the Star Wars game. Star Wars it League. is, and it's something the viewers of the show know Harrison's been on about. Right, right, and you picked him up his box, right? Well, I've picked up Harrison his box, so yeah. we'll be having a wee look at that. Not strictly bolt action, guys, but no, you know. but whatever. It's, it's gaming, and yeah. it's so approximately 28 millimeter. So that was its official release was here, although yeah. it's everybody's known about it. But they also had the first competition here as yeah, well it was so it was funny watching all these guys over there yeah. playing the game with unpainted miniatures well not only that it was funnier watching them to buy their miniatures and then start making them up with blue, do you have blue tack over here sticky yeah, yeah, yeah. thing blue tack to keep them together so they could play yeah. their competition yeah so that was that was interesting that's but funny but a bunch of great guys because the rules have been out there for a bit in the how-to videos so yeah. So, yeah, so next time we'll probably see a lot of that kind of stuff. I'll probably get into that myself. But back to bolt action. Um, yeah, it was just an amazing event, I think. I, I had fun just standing there watching people play because yeah. I don't get to play as often as I wish I could. So just watching other people play is like educational for me. I can see how they're doing it. Or how not to do it. Or how not to do it. <laughs> That's the case when you watch me. So. No, watching your opponents, actually. There were a few. Oh, come on. The guy, the, the, we were very lucky today. So you, yeah. Yeah. Or they were very unlucky or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. No, it's, it's all good. I've, I've had a great time so far. And we still got another full day tomorrow and Sunday. We do. So we'll probably, on Sunday, I'll start to get a look around the traders a bit more. I've had a quick look around the traders. There's one or two things that are bolt actually out there. And I've got um, one of the fellow bot actioners here today again, friend of the Wahoo Warrior, Ryan Carlson. He bought one of the was it battle foam boxes that were made up for Warlord. They've got their own battle foam oh, Warlord okay, okay. with all the badges come inside and everything. Oh, so cool. you'll be able to have a look at that and see the battle foam. And it comes with the foams all pre-cut for Warlord. Right. Um, it's particularly bolt action. So that's cool. You get a look at that. What else have I noticed? There's a few guys are doing odd miniatures. I think we had a look at a bunch of guys that did something we could certainly use as a heavy howitzer for the Russians. Do you remember that one? Yeah, it was that was the kind of a steampunkish kind of. It was. Yeah. But oh, it would be a really cool model. I don't know if it was dust or not. I don't think it was dust. I think it was their own thing. But we'll bring you some. Yeah, we'll that. bring you some pictures of that. This Gosh, was, what this else has been happening? In the uh, in the uh, dealer hall or whatever it's called yeah. here, I don't know. Uh, I got my first real good up close look at uh, the trench works. There, there were. Oh right, yeah, the trench works guys are here. They, they well do. known to the bolt action community. Yeah, they do some really good work, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work on becoming a dealer with them. So. Well, as news, they've got three new models out, a couple of Sherman variants, and they also have something I've never seen before, um, a M18 close top. I've never seen the top one in M80, I'm sure it is Wolverine. 
Wolverine or... Or the, the British one. one comes with a 17 pounder in yeah, it. Yeah. But it was close stop, so that was something just a wee bit different. They've got one or two new things yeah, they're, coming they're, out there. So I might have some footage if I remember to place play on the camera. Their, uh, their resin work is very clean. I mean, I'm sure they're showing the best of their best, but, but what yeah. I saw there looked really good. And some of their kits are kind of hybrid resin with some metal fittings here and there. But they just, they look really well done. And I've heard of them and I've seen some pictures of the stuff painted online, but this was the first time I got to see the, the raw yeah, product. Sure, yeah. And that's when you can really judge it, I think. And I was impressed, I like it. Uh, what else, Bolt Action guys? We're having to have a wee think. Well, of course, uh, news is tomorrow will be US Nationals. We're looking forward to that. Slightly different format to last year for the US Nationals. So they're going to play four games this year. The, it's 1,000 points instead of 1,250 points. So they've come down in points. I'm not too sure if that's to try and um, curtail the game length time or what the reasoning is. Could be. And um, you've got the, the first game is going to be a 500-point game that has to be made out of your 1,000-point list. So we will be looking forward to that, see how we do there. Uh, so that's the big news, just a one day competition. So technically a GT, because it's four games. Yeah. But um, I'm just kind of surprised it isn't the two days. Especially because we'll be here for the Sunday, so. Four games in a row, is, it's going to be a couple hours each, right? I mean, you're talking an eight hour day. Yeah, it's going to be a long night. But you would have thought they would do the two days and do six or five games. Yeah. But anyway, it's not, it's what it is, so it is. I'm happy to play with the tournament organisation for both Combat Patrol on for Thursday, I'm forgetting the days of the week, <laughs> and today, Friday, was outstanding by Jeremy and the team from Chicago. They're amazing. I have they're to say fun. that ran really well, and TO dealt very well with any things that came up. It was mainly me, to be honest, so... <laughs> Sorry to beat you to all that extra work, Jeremy. <laughs> what a shame. And I, th and I think he had a... Was it Jeremy? Uh, Who's the one that was organizing the tables? Was that, uh, I think it was Jeremy in the green t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're all just great people. They're just really friendly and really nice and very accommodating. Like yesterday when we wanted to use a couple of tables to... I mean, tables a couple of times to run some games. You know, they're like, yeah, yeah, use that one. That's fine. It doesn't matter. They didn't care who we were or what we wanted to do. They just like, go use it. And what about the tables? There are some excellent tables here. I think they've done really, really well on the tables. Yeah. Um, I mean, and there was some some guy from GC Mini supplied some of the stuff to the tables. And <laughs> well, you know, whilst the guy who runs the company is a bit of a you know what, but the, the, the scenery was pretty good. Yeah. There's there was a lot of stuff there that a lot of stuff there that wasn't mine. There was just a few things there that weren't. Oh mine. yeah. And I'm I'm happy to say that the stuff there that wasn't mine is all awesome. It, it is, good. isn't it? It was all real good stuff. One of the favourites from the Facebook um, that I pictures that I sent out was the airfield. Yeah was really really nice so go to the Facebook to have a look at that I'll put some stills and there's a wee bit of a camera shot on there yeah the, the, the airstrip was cool it's I wouldn't call it really scale really accurate it's, still, it's, it's one weird. of the things that I normally wouldn't like but the way they've done it yeah because it was it's, it's it, kind of slightly cartoony which maybe doesn't do it justice but no, no, it no. kind of really just works it's just it's very cinematic it is it yeah just gives you that the feeling that they were going for you yeah. get it right away it was well done. So I liked it. There isn't really a shortage of scenery. A table that I've never played on before, which was kind of fun, and at first I thought it would be awkward. They have a winter snow table, and they put trees all over it, and you are basically in a forest. So the entire table is soft cover, unless you're within an inch, right. and rough ground. And it actually works really, really well. Well, it there's, there's no actual hard cover in it, but it's, it was it worked. And it causes you to play differently, maybe some way you've never played before. Yeah, but I've just never seen that type of table. Let's yeah. say, look, there's one bit of area terrain, and it's the size of the table, mate. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, what else was different on tables? I've played on a few tables to say, so two tables I've played on twice between Thursday Night and Combat Patrol and today. There's another really nice looking table with the two railway tracks. We looked at it tonight. Yeah. Um, I think some of the guys from the club in Chicago here have been doing Yeah, and that was Jeremy's big tank factory. The, the GC oh, yeah. Mini tank factory, by the way. Yeah. Um, he did a really good job on that, and he broke it up into pieces 
He said initially he did that for storage reasons, yeah. but also when he puts it out on the board, it gives him more options. He can spread things out yeah. and actually make the building Well, that's bigger. really good because a lot of people might look at that rather large building and think it's a nice building, but it takes up too much space. But that's a great way of making his, his um, divided up and yeah. Made dealt with that really well. Sort of a modular construction. So you kind of, so for your money, you kind of get a table's worth of scenery, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Well, so that makes fun. Which really brings us on to GC Minis. What about now, them? What about them? Well, you guys have uh, got into making stuff for Bolt Action over the last year or so. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what have you got on your plans for GC Minis uh, scenery-wise for Bolt Action? Well, we started uh, the uh, Saving Private Ryan series. I call it a series. It's one building right now. It's the, uh, the Saving Private Ryan uh, the church, the church bell the tower, where the where there was the, the the sniper with the 30 cal up there. Yeah. Um, so that was the first building in the series, and we're going to add on to that. Basically, every building you see along that street and possibly the bridge as well. I want to do that whole city block because I want to play that as a scenario, and I want to do sticky bombs and all that fun stuff. So that series is begun. Um, also now with the uh, Market Garden uh, book that just came out, we're working on some more stuff for that. We're doing some bridges and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I'm putting a lot of attention into the 28 millimeter stuff. My six millimeter, 15 and 20 millimeter lines are pretty well fleshed out and they're doing well. So now, now that I'm into bolt action, I'm devoting a lot of my personal attention to developing for that game. So in the beginning, I, I kind of ignored 28 millimeter. So I'm a lifelong six millimeter gamer, you know that. So that's kind of where my passion was for a long time. So now it's it's switching up to a proper scale. Up to a proper scale. A proper scale. Six millimeter is a proper scale. But um, bolt action scenery isn't the only thing you do. Um, you do a lot of what we would call Sundays or paint stations and various things? The paint racks and the paint stations are a big part of the business, yes. Uh, they continue to do well. And that gives me the time to do these other sort of pet projects, like the bolt action stuff. But, uh, but as well, we've got a, one of the real stars, I think, is the lighted arch that you do. Yes. And you know, you now got risers for that. Right. So we get a bit more brush um, space underneath there. Yeah, that started out as one one light that clips onto the painting station. Yeah. It was single width, you know, one strip of lights. And then I did a double wide, two strips of lights for people that want more light. And then I thought, well, what if you don't have a painting station and you just want a light on your bench? Yeah. That's what you got. You got the yeah. work, workbench light. Yeah. So I did that in a single and a double. And I've just recently taken it to the extreme. I've done a painting station light that's extra tall so it's, it doesn't need a riser. Right. And it has three rows of lights because you can never have too much light. So that'll be coming out very soon, actually. No, you know what's going to happen there. Okay. I'm on one. But you you made your first sale. There we go. Yeah, I, I built one. It's on it's on my painting The station. double ones, because I'll give my double one to Brian. And hey, I'll take the triple take one. Take the triple. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, go. So, Brian, you've got paint station light coming your way, man. So, yeah, that's that's next to come out. And uh, I, like I said, I built one. I'm using it. I love it. So now I need I to love the double one. So, yeah. So the triple's even better. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. So are you going to do a video on that? Oh, definitely, for sure, yeah. Oh, that'll be good. So when do you think you'll have that finished off and being productive. Well, get off my back. I'm at a convention, relaxing, having a good time. You're working. That's the way you did here. Probably sometime next week. I think that's coming yeah. out. Yeah, it's ready. I, I, I finished it. I wanted to finish it and actually use it for a while and make sure there's no tweaks I need to make on it. Um, and it's all good. We'll also see a couple of videos that you put up um, showing new products. Uh, Pegasus, the bridge that was like Pegasus Bridge. Right. Yeah. Um, that's that's a model that's actually been available for a while, but I've modified it. Yeah. Basically, long story short, I made a 28 millimeter Pegasus bridge. I call it a Pegasus bridge. It's the new, it's the bridge that's there now. Now, yeah. Yeah. So I made a 28 millimeter, and it was probably five feet long. I made a 15 millimeter, which is approximately half that, as it should be. And then I decided that the 28 millimeter was just too big for any game board, probably. So I started looking at the 15 millimeter one going, it's wide enough and it's tall enough for 28 millimeter vehicles. So why not just make the sidewalks wider so they can accommodate the bases? Uh, the bases. Yeah. And we'll call this a game scale 28 millimeter. 
and that's working out real well. And that's just been released about a week or so ago. Yeah, and it. having a slightly smaller footprint makes it both a bit more attractive it, it for, it, for gameplay. Yeah, it makes it on a, on a five or six foot table, it doesn't take the entire table. It's just a centerpiece where the other the other bridge took the whole table. And that's just, you know, for some situations that might work, but probably not for most. So I'm learning slowly but surely to fudge a little on scale to make it playable. Yeah. You know, my, my career as a model maker has always been in aviation and everything it's either scale or it's not. So everything has got to be perfect. Well, now I'm, I'm relaxing a little on that and making things more playable. Chilling out with age. Chilling out with age. So now you've reached 21, it's time to relax and take it easy. And I'm working on 21 <laughs> for the third time, okay? Okay, for the third time. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, yeah that's out and that's, uh, it's, it's online. And I don't remember the price, but being smaller, it, it got cheaper and it's, very reasonable for what it is. I now, one of the things we usually do in a section on the show is something about listing and army lists, etc. And to make this easy for me, because you know I really don't like doing the work, guys, if I can help it, you brought Airborne with you. I did bring Airborne with so me. So, what list did you bring with you so I don't have to do this spot? Do I have to pull it out and read it for you? You know what it is. I did, a, I did a 500 and a 750 list. Yeah. Uh, the 500 is, they're, they're all veterans. Uh, second lieutenant, of course, because you have to. And there were three squads of, I want to say six guys each, with three or four submachine guns and a BAR. I intended this list to be used in close combat, you yeah. know, city, you know, buildings and things like that. So there aren't very many long-range weapons. There aren't any uh, you know, medium machine guns or anything like that. Um, and as part of that list, you schooled me on this. I added, oh, a, <laughs> I added a Jeep, yeah. and then I added a 50 cal team, thinking those guys just go together. Because yeah. I have a Jeep with a 50 cal in it, and it has three guys in the back and a driver, three guys in it and a driver, the four guys total. So I, I overpaid for that, as you pointed out, yeah. because in the armored car section, you can get a Jeep with a machine gun in it a lot cheaper than a Jeep and a machine gun, for some reason. It's a package deal, I guess. So, so have you read through Market Garden yet? I have not. I, I read through Market Garden for you, because you're going to be able to take armored Jeeps, and you're going to be able to take three or four of them. I think three of them. Okay. You might be able to take two snipers as well. Oh, nice. And possibly two artillery pieces Okay. on some of the list. And you might get to ignore Tiger Fear. I like all You need things. to get Market Garden. You've got no, no excuse I'll, not to read Market oh, Garden. I've got it. I just haven't. I've just flipped through it and said, "Oh, that's a beautiful book," and I put it away because it is very nicely put together yeah. and partly written by friend of the show, Chris Brown. Aloha, Chris. Hey, we'll be traveling out to Arm Arnhem with you in September for the big weekend. So that will be fun. We'll have a whole weekend of shows from Arm Arnhem in September. That'll be cool. Um, yeah, that was my list, and it, it worked okay. And I had a the 750 version is basically the same list, adding a steward. Yeah, and a couple other real small things, but that's basically the difference. So if we get the time this weekend, we'll maybe get a wee game with them, and people can actually see them in action. Yeah, it might be nice to pull out the steward. The first the games that we played were both the 500 yeah. point list, and it was fun. And I lost both times, but uh, it's all good. Oh, so, it's all good. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Makes a change for me losing guys. We'll have to go. So, and on that note, I think that's about us for the war room. We're going to say goodbye for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to look into the war room's Facebook and the YouTube, obviously, if you're watching this. But also check out GC Minis. Check out GC on Minis on YouTube yeah. and your website. Yeah, and uh, in the game room .com for all. Oh, the, how could I forget that? Yeah, for all the podcast video and audio and whatnot and things. So guys, goodbye from Chicago and we'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.